welcome to UTFI, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your own plastic texture. Uh, coarse, bumpy plastic texture and that. Proper plastic, like. It's aimed at newbies, beginners, new starters, or anybody really that's always wondered how to do this and has never really figured it out, I suppose. So we've got a plastic part on screen, which is, which is like a shroud casing of a graphics card. It's plastic, but it don't look it. It's just flat. So I'm going to show you how to make a black plastic texture and slap it against the model so it looks plasticky. Uh, and if you're wondering why some things might be different in mind to what you're looking at, I'm using the Autodesk Appearance Library. So if I select this drop down here, uh, I've got Autodesk Appearance Library ticked. Uh, it should be there by default after you've installed Inventor unless you've deleted it. Uh, you just give that a click and then that should load in the most textures available to Inventor, which is uh, out of the Autodesk Appearance Library. Okay, let's get cracking. So, to start making your own textures, you've got to click this button here, right? That is the Appearance Browser. Give that a click. This is the notoriously frustrating and awkward Appearance Browser. For new starters, I'll give you a quick explanation of what we're looking at. In the top area here, these are the textures that are currently being used or have been used in the 3D model that we've got open. Anything in here can be edited, hacked up, screwed up, messed about with as much as you want and it won't change anything you've done in the past and it won't damage anything you do in the future. These textures are completely localized to the 3D model that you've got open right now. Down below, this is the Autodesk Appearance Library, which is in your style library. It's in C program data or C users, public documents, something like that. It's the Autodesk Appearance Library. It's read only. You can't change what's in here. These are templates that you can use for your model, but what it does when you pick one of these, it downloads a copy, puts it in the document, and then uses the document texture. So for example, if I right click on the, this the bathroom tile type effect thing here. If I right click on that, I can't select use, I can't select edit, I can't select delete. It's completely read only. What I have to do is add it to the document materials that can now be used against the model. I can also edit it, I can delete it, I can duplicate it, rename it, delete it, manipulate it, hack it up as much as I want because it's now stored a copy of it in the model that I'm working on right now. So I'm gonna delete that because I'm not gonna use that. Okay, so we could do that with a plastic and then manipulate a, a default kind of provided plastic material, but we're gonna create our own. So to do that, what you do, in the appearance browser at the bottom, this button here creates a new material or new texture. So select that and then we're gonna select plastic. So that creates a new icon here called default plastic. Now Autodesk are proper pranksters. Oh, good old lads, oh, they're allowed oh, off my stuff all on the bed. Yeah, yeah. They love they love trolling with you and playing with you because they, they knew you've just made a material. So what they thought is, well, hey, come on, let's just chuck a dialogue box behind. Whoa, it's a bit funny, let's mess with them. Uh, so it, when you do create a new material, it does throw a dialog box behind the appearance browser like this. It's bloody awful. It's a horrible dialog box. The, the, the whole module is awful to use, but either way, either way, the, the best thing to do is to grab this thing here, right, which we don't need for now, and just chuck it kind of off screen a bit so it's out the way, and then we're going to be working purely exclusively in this one here. Okay, you can make it a bit bigger if you want to as well, just so it's a bit more usable, I suppose, depends on the size of your screen. But this is default plastic, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to call this Black Textured Plastic. So that's going to be the name of the texture that appears in the document materials. And because we said make a new plastic appearance, it's given us properties unique to plastic. So the type, is it plastic solid? Is it transparent? Is it vinyl? What's the color? What's the finish type? Glossy, polished, or matte? So we've got a few options here which are going to be unique to plastic, which just helps, just helps define the material, the texture a bit better. So I'm gonna hit apply, right? And we're gonna click cancel on that. And I'm gonna apply this texture to the model. So as we're editing it, we can see it update on the model in real time. So there's a couple of ways you can do that, but I, the, my default kind of go-to way is to select the top drop down list here. And then I'm gonna scroll up to the top and you should see it in the list, black textured plastic. It's not black yet, uh, but there it is. So we're gonna go back into the appearance browser, right click on black textured plastic, click edit, and now we can start making changes to this so we can see it updating in real time. So for the color, it's black. So we're gonna select this color swatch here, right? This this is a big, big button. You can click anywhere on that, and then we can go to define custom colors, and then we can pick a color. I don't want it to be a complete black. I don't know why, just because I'm kind of edgy like that. 
<laughs> kind of go for like an off black kind of grayish color click OK and then that updates in the background and straight away so it's good it's good to see it changing as you're editing the material the material I'm so, sorry I keep calling it material it's not a material it's a it's an appearance uh, for the finish uh, polished you've got glossy and you've got matte which for black it actually makes quite a big difference if you're using a white texture not so much not so much it will do in a final ray trace but uh, in in the background modeling environment it doesn't make that much of a difference uh, but i'm going to hit apply the next thing i'm going to do as well is just whilst we're still editing this i'm going to select the visual style button on the ribbon bar and we'll change this to be realistic uh, because that also changes how the texture looks as well so we'll make a glossy uh, matte so it still changes but it's just more realistic looking as we're making changes to it right the, the big crescendo, right, the, the meat and potato of making your texture look good is the bump map. So we're going to tick finish bumps, click your local disk C, and you need to browse to a folder on your computer, which will be there, which contains a massive amount of textures that you can use against your model. These are textures and bump maps as well. So we're going to go to program files x86, common files, autodesk shared, materials, textures, one, two, and three. Right, tech, uh, folder number one is the low resolution small images. These are the medium resolution medium images, and these are high resolution, quite big sized images. The, the, the sample sizes, the tiles are quite big. I, I don't know why, I just like going for the large ones just because in my head I think they're going to be better quality. So we're going to go for folder number three, go into mats, and then we're going to search the mats folder for plastics. But before we do that, Depending on the size of your screen, you might want to increase the size of these thumbnails that might be a bit too small. So you can select this little, this is a Windows thing, not an Autodesk thing, but you can go to more options and then grab the slide bar and then just whack that all the way up to the top. So now you can see better what they are. So you can see these are kind of a stone effect. You've got all kinds in here, woods, laminates, slate, fabrics, that kind of thing. But we're going to search this folder for plastic and that should return plastics and some woods as well. In here, you've got a mixture of bump maps and normal textures. I can't tell you what to use. It depends on what it is you're going for. But for my texture, it's plastic, and it's going to be sort of dimply. So I'm going to go for this one here, which is plastic coarse bump. The bump maps are the white and gray ones. You can also tell the bump maps because it's got the word bump in the file name. So I'm going to double click that, and then you can see in the background, it's automatically applied that, that bump to the plastic but it's too big it looks like water almost actually uh, and the reason for that is that the size of the bump map tile is huge in comparison to the model so to change the size of the bump map what you do is you click this little picture here it's not really little it's massive uh, but this picture here this opens up the texture editor and the size of the tile is actually 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters so this model is nowhere near 30 centimeters big so that's why this bump map looks weird so i'm going to reduce the size of the sample to maybe let's say four centimeters by four centimeters and we'll just scroll in uh, just make the light catch it a bit and yeah i think that looks all right actually i think in terms of size that looks all right i might drop it down just by one centimeter three by three yeah, I'm happy with that. It looks all right. Because this is a pretty uniform texture, rotating it isn't going to make any difference, but you can rotate it if you want to. But uh, that only really makes a difference when you've got kind of grain effects with horizontal or vertical uh, patterns in them. Uh, but we don't have that in this one, so that's not going to matter. So I'm going to shut down the texture editor. And the only other thing really to do, just scroll in, zoom in a bit more, is the depth of the bump, the amount of bump that's being applied and this is this slide bar here now the value is not a unit of measurement in any way shape or form it's a percentage value from zero to one uh, if the, the bigger it is you can see it affecting it it's it starts to look ridiculous the more bump you've got on it but it depends what you're going for i mean that looks ridiculous it does that's not what the, the actual part looks like in real life it looks kind of wet at the moment the more dimpled the, the bump map is the more light catches in the engravings and it just looks ridiculous so i can strike a balance maybe 0 0.2 perhaps something around there you can type the value in if you want to be specific but uh, that looks fine to me in fact that's probably a bit too much let's go for 0 0.1 there we go. That'll do. That'll do. I'm happy with that. That looks like plastic to me, and I'm happy with that. And we can click OK, and then that would be it done. But we can play around with it. If you don't want it to be black, I mean, it, it is black because I've named the texture black, but we can change the colors. You know, it it's entirely up to you. you. You can change it in real time and see the effects update as you go. So it's it's entirely up to you from this point onwards. But there's, there's true black as opposed to my edgy 
off black, which I actually did prefer. Something like that, I suppose. There we go. Okay. And that's it done. That's the texture created, applied, and it's looking pretty plasticky to me. <laughs> Quite happy with that. Okay, what next? Well, there is nothing next. That is it. The texture is created. It's stored in this document, but unfortunately it can't be used in any of the parts. If you do want to use this in other parts, what you'd have to do is either do a save as on this model and then delete the model and start from there. Alternatively, you can make your own texture library, which is a bit of, bit of a faff, but I've done a video on that already and I'll link that up in the top right of the screen. But you would right click on that texture, add it to your own material library, and then that can be used in other models. But from at the moment, it's it's only usable in this model. But there you go. There's my black plastic texture, all done and dusted. It's set to realistic. We've got uh, different lighting styles which can affect the texture. So, for example, if I select grid light, diff different lighting styles will catch the texture in different ways. Uh, it just depends on what it is and what you what you're going for. Really, what kind of look you're going for. Uh, that one looks a bit overly glossy, actually. I would, If this was real and I was using this in real life, I would probably go back and make some changes to the to the size of the dimples and the, the depth of them to make them a little less prominent. But, well, now up to you. That's now entirely up to you. All right, that'll do. That's how you create your own texture. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles!